welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at hyperlinks. Now, hyperlinks can be used in two ways. One, for linking to an external website like google.com, or second, is for navigation between your own website and the web pages. So in this lesson, we're going to look at hyperlinks, how they work, um, the elements you need to kind of make them work, and then to style them. So we're going to create um, an external hyperlink. We're going to create an internal hyperlink. We're going to look at a couple more um, stylistic elements like padding, margin, and text decoration. And then your extension task is going to be to link and test two of your pages so you can go backwards and forth to both pages very, very easily as a way of navigating between multiple pages. So let's have a look what we've got so far. Just a quick recap then. So in the last lesson, we set up a stylesheet.css. Um, this is where all of our styles for all of our pages are going to be kept. And we're going to link to this style sheet inside of our pages using this one line of code here. Um, if you don't quite understand what that code means and or all of its context, just know that this is what's linking this page to this style sheet so that all of these elements can be styled. The most important thing about this whole thing is the name that you've given your particular style sheet. So you can see the name of my style sheet is stylesheet.css. And if you click here, you can see that that is actually what it's called, style sheet, and then it's .css, okay? And it's in this root folder. So the next thing that we did last lesson was we created images. So using the IMG tag, we just created multiple images for our website. Um, so I've got four images here and we put them inside the images folder. So you can see that this is the images folder just here and that's denoted by this backslash character. And then this is the image name um, followed by what type of image it is, the JPEG. You can also have PNG, you can also have .gif, GIF files. Um, any kind of files like that will work. If for some reason your images don't work, um, just check the type. That's normally, it's either the type or it's the name that you've called it. So from there, we then styled our IMG tag using a width parameter, um, a border, and a border radius. The final outcome, including your extension task then, should look something like this. So you've got four images. Now, the reason it's stacked up like this is because of the page size. So if I made it bigger, um, you'll see it gets bigger. So this is because we used the percentage. Now you'll notice that I've reduced mine to 45%, um, less than the border radius. So if I'd gone for 50%, they wouldn't have stacked up in these halves like that. So I've had to make it slightly smaller just to make sure that it takes into consideration the border rate, the, the actual border of 10 pixels as well, which is this one here. And you can make the border less and you can change the color using the picker. Okay, so that was that was the last lesson. This lesson we're looking at hyperlinks. So let's start by linking to Google. So here's my web page. Actually, let's start by creating a new page. So this page is called test one. It's I've in the title now I've changed it to page one and then there's the link of test one the HTML. I've also changed the header to page one test one HTML. So when you're actually on the page, you can see in the title that's the page. And if you look at the H1 tag, you'll notice that I've got it there. And it's going to make it a bit more visual because my two pages are going to be identical. Okay, so now let's go and create our next page. And all I'm going to do is right click, copy, right click and paste. So I've now got exactly the same pages. So I just need to call this test two. I don't need to worry about the HTML because it's not showing up here. So I can't, now that it's already created, I can't actually change the doc type to HTML. So that is a HTML file. So grab this test two, drag it onto this area here, and you'll see that now I've got these two files. And um, let's just change both of these elements here. So let's change this one to page two and test two the HTML. And let's change this to page two and test to HTML just so that when we're switching between the pages in a second, save all, it becomes a little bit more obvious. So now we've set up our pages, we've now got two pages to go between. So that'll set up the navigation. So let's go back to te test page one and let's create our first external hyperlink. Now you can go to any website you want. You can go to Amazon, you can go to Google, you can go to just about any page you want, Facebook or, or whatever. Um, and this is the code that you need. So the tag that we're going to use is called an A tag. 
and you'd have to close that as well. So this is one of those tags. So like the image tag and the style tag, the link tag, you didn't have to close them. And there you, you can close them just for good convention, but you actually don't need to. Whereas the A tag does need to be closed. And that's basically denoting that this is going to be a hyperlink. And both internal and external links use exactly the same. The next thing we need is a href. Now we've used href before, we used it up here to link to the style sheet. So what we're going to do with this href is we're going to link it to the other page. So we're going to say href equals, and then those speech marks, and then the page that we want to link it to. So our page is called test2.html. You do need to put the HTML thing um, on it. Actually, refrain that because we're actually meant to be linking to Google. So let's do Google first. So delete that. And let's head on over to Google. Um, the most important thing when you're linking to any website is you get the full address from the bar. So if it was Amazon you're going to or whatever, you need it. You need it including this HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. You need all of that information. So let's put that in there instead. Now, um, the next thing that we need to do is give it a name. So inside of these tags, so we've created the starting tag and the end tag. Inside of these tags, we need to tell it what if we click on this link where we're going. So let's say go to Google. Okay, so there's my link. Save all and let's head on back over to here. So if you haven't already got this open, you can just press refresh. Now the link is at the bottom of my page. So if I scroll down, you'll notice go to Google is right there. So click on that and voila, it heads on over to Google. Let's just do it one more time just so you can see that that worked. There you go, and then we go off to Google. So we've gone off site now, and we've just clicked the back button to go back there. So we have our first external link. So the next thing that we need to do is create an internal link. So the same code again. So do this opening and closing a tag. So in between these two tags, we can say go to page one. And I know this is page one, but we're going to create both links. And this is really important. When you've got navigation to have both links on all pages. So you can, from wherever you are on the website, if you've got 100 pages, it makes it so much easier to get between those pages. So the next thing is we need a href. href equals, and then two speech marks, and then the page that we're going to. So page one is called test1.com. HTML. So if you was to click on this link, it wouldn't actually go anywhere, and that's absolutely fine. If I'm going too fast for you guys, just pause the video now and get that bit of code in and test it, okay? So now let's do the next link. So the same code again, so an A tag, then an A tag closing, and then let's put inside of here go to page two, yeah, and then href. Um, equals and then two speech marks and then the actual code so we need test 2.html now what we can do is test all these links we know the Google one works but we need to test these two before we do that let's put both of these links on the other page so select them all control C for copy head on over to test 2 and let's just paste that one in there control V for paste and save all head back over to my test one page make sure you're on page one yes yeah, so it says page one here and it also tells me page one here scroll to the bottom and if I click on the page one it hits me back to the top but you can see I'm still at page one now if I go to page two you'll see now I'm on page two and it tells me so now let's go back to page one and we've created our navigation between the two pages so if you want to pause the video and get that in now that would be great so the final part of this lesson is just to style that A tag because at the moment they look a bit a bit dull. The other thing, you might not want them at the bottom of your page because you notice to get to them you've got to scroll. Sometimes that's okay, but most navigations go at the top of the page. If you want to move an element, so let's leave Google at the bottom, but let's move these two elements, control copy or control cut, so X, and let's move it to the top of the page. So make sure it's inside of the body because if you do it outside the body it won't work properly. And let's just drop them in there. So we're inside the body, and now we have our two links. Press save again, test it again. So now we've got our two links at the very top, so it makes a bit more sense now. Um, let's go styling then. So in order to style this, we just need to call up the A tag. 
So we say A, and then the curly brackets next to the P on your keyboard. And the first one we want to do is if you notice, all of these have got this underline. And sometimes when you're starting, you want to get rid of the underline. It's not the easiest thing to do. And it's called text decoration. So if you type in text hyphen decoration, colon, and then say none, semicolon, what that will do, save all, what that will do is it will get rid of all of this. Now, we've just done one bit of code, but watch what happens. If I go to my page two and go all the way to the bottom, it's updated it here as well. And that's that's the real genius of using a style sheet is you update the code once and that's all you need to do. And it does everything for you rather than having to do it on every single page. And that's what you would have had to done if you had left your style tags in, okay? It makes it very, very efficient. Let's keep styling. So we've got our text decoration. That's the first thing I like to do. Now let's change the color. So let's say color. Remember, you've got to spell color wrong um, without the U. And we'll just say white for now. So color, um, colon, white, semicolon. Now let's say font size. Font hyphen size. Oopsies. Colon and let's make it really big. So let's say 18 PT for points. You can use pixels as well if you want. So if you want to say 18 PX, it's a completely different size, but you can say that and then you can adjust it as needed. Um, what else do we want to do? Let's give it a border. So let's say border. Let's try and spell border right this time. Solid um, green. You can use the color picker if you want. 5 PX pixels. Then what? So we want a background? Let's have a background. Um, what color background do we want? We've got white text, so let's have a gray background. And let's see what that looks like. So save that. And we should be having something that looks a bit more like navigation. Now, we're going to use two new ones here. So we're going to use margin and padding. Now, this is really interesting. So the margin, see where this green line is? The margin takes care of outside of the green line and the padding takes care of inside of the green line so let's do padding first and we'll do a really drastic padding so I can show you what happens so let's say padding and let's say 20 pixels um, so it's padding oops colon 20 pixels semicolon and press save all now what you should see is inside has got radically bigger so the padding takes care of this area. So you've got border, padding, and then you've got border, margin. So margin's on the outside. So let me show you some margin now. So if I say margin, and let's do the same 20 pixels again. So margin, colon, 20 pixels, semicolon, save everything, and then refresh your page. Now what you'll notice is you have a bigger gap between them. Now, there's a few other things you can do here. You can you can have negative margins, you can have different margins. So if you wanted the top and the bottom to be different to the left and the right, you can also do that. We'll go into that some other time, not now. So your extension task then is to link up your two pages so you can back and forth and make sure you style all of your links, okay? If you have more than two pages, make sure you link them all. I would definitely recommend putting all of your links on all of the pages for so you can navigate between any page you want. Get that done and I'll see you in the next lesson.